Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperium of Man as we get into Planetary Governors. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K content every single day. We love the lore and we talk about the lore a lot. So, um, subscribe. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on the Imperial Governors. The political leader of a world of the Imperium of Man is known as a planetary governor, or sometimes as an imperial governor, and is considered an imperial commander in military matters. Regardless of his or her specific title, a planetary governor is an individual with the authority to rule a world or even an entire star system in the name of the Emperor of Mankind. The planetary governor of a particular important world may also serve as a subsector, sector, or even a segmentum governor in some cases. Naturally, since the vast and dispersed nature of imperial space would make a totally centralized system of interstellar government unfeasible, the planetary governor is given discretionary political control over the administration of all planets in question. In theory, an imperial commander is duty-bound to the Adeptus Terra. In particular, though, he is an independent, autonomous ruler who can govern his planet as he sees fit, with only minimal interference from other organs of the Imperium. As long as the planet's Imperial taxes are paid, its mutant and psyker populations are kept under control, the requisite tithes of psykers and astromilitarum regiments are delivered to the Imperium, and the planet is governed competently. The governor is free to run the planet however he chooses. Imperial planetary governors are expected to defend the planet in the name of the Imperium, maintaining necessary planetary defense forces and orbital defenses. Due to the fickle nature of the warp, astropathic communication with the Adeptus Terra is often delayed and sometimes prevented entirely. Often this means that the governors must take decisions on the defense of their worlds without advice and help from Terra, meaning that for the world to prosper, every governor must be adept at military matters as well as the development of the planet's trade and commercial infrastructure. Planetary governors are usually referred to in the imperial feudal nomenclature as lords, and their positions often become hereditary depending on the world's political culture. Even though governors are given these extraordinary powers over a planet's population, they come at a price. The governor is a sworn vassal of the Imperium, and as such, is required to provide military support to local Imperial campaigns. In the early history of the Imperium, this was a simple process, a straightforward pledge to provide a certain number of troops and to fight in person when required. This was later seen to be too inflexible because as the Imperium grew, the differing number of troops provided made poor use of some of the planet's populations, and on others, too high a proportion of the population was sent to war, leaving the planet sorely short of the labor required to effectively run its economy. This pledge was thus later replaced with a tithe to provide Imperial Guard regiments. The tithe is assessed by the wealth and available resources of the planet. As part of the tithe, the governor is expected to supply troops to the Imperial Guard, the troops often being requisitioned from the planet's existing planetary defense force. The tithe is also a percentage of the planet's economic output, in whatever form that may be derived. Most tithes are regular obligations, while others are demanded when specific circumstances are met. These requirements led to a close relationship between Imperial Planetary Governors and the officials of the Departamental Minotaurum, who look after the deployment of men and supplies across the galaxy. Both military and economic tithes go to the Departamental Minotaurum, who can raise soldiers from across entire sectors of the galaxy. Once the Planetary Governor has learned how to please the Departamental Minotaurum and has no problem supplying his tithes, he is free to govern his planet as he sees fit. Most governors, worth their chops, will try their best to expand their power. Unfortunately, this means the exploitation of the planet's population. This can take the form of governors lowering wages to the point of slave labor, taxing all industry to increase their own wealth, 
or using the planetary defense force to benefit their own ventures. Because the rule of the planet is a birthright given to most of these governors, they grow up seeing the rest of the world's population as their property rather than their subjects. To many governors, the average imperial citizen is equivalent to livestock. And as such, it is easy for imperial governors to treat their people as less than human. It is rare to find a governor that is loved by his people. More often than not, the world's population is only held back from overthrowing the governor because of the fear instilled in them by the planetary defense force. A talented governor will suppress rebellions before they even have a chance to take root. The wisest of governors find a balance between rightful ruler and merciless dictator. On the forge worlds of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the imperial governor is only imperial in name. The tech priests choose amongst their ranks Magi who will be promoted to the rank of Fabricator General and the Mechanicus equivalent rank to that of a planetary governor. The Fabricator General's loyalty is always to the cult Mechanicus first and the Imperium second and he is notably more independent of the Adeptus Terra than other planetary governors. His only obligation to the Imperium being that his world delivered the required tithes in war material and other manufactured items. Regardless of the type of political system by which a world is administered, there exists a single individual who holds the post of Imperial Commander or Planetary Governor. Most of the world of the Imperium are entirely independent at least so long as tides are forthcoming, but others are the domain of such bodies of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Departo Minotaurum, or even the Space Marines of the Adeptus Astarte. Even so, there is an official who holds such a rank, a Magos Prime in the case of the Adeptus Mechanicus, a Supreme Perfect in the case of the Administratum, or the Chapter Master of a designated Regent in the case of a Space Marine. The exact title varies from world to world, but the principle is more or less universal. When acting overtly on any of the imperial worlds, it is common for an inquisitor to go straight to the top, to the world's imperial governor. Should the inquisitor have needs of the world's resources, most cut out the middlemen and make their request or demand directly to the individual who holds ultimate power on the world. Depending on their demeanor, an inquisitor might approach an imperial governor as a peer, with appropriate ceremony. He might hold court, laying out requirements and pacifying the governor's ego with honey words and shows of respect, regardless of the words he uses in such instances. No inquisitor considers himself anything other than above the imperial commander, and such players are amongst the most dangerous and effective of the inquisition's operatives. Other inquisitors make no such compromise writing rough over local sensitivities and demanding in no uncertain terms what they require. The vast majority of Imperial commanders comply with the Inquisitor's demands without hesitation, for even if their people are ignorant of much of the greater Imperium, they are fully aware that they are just one world amongst multitudes and ultimately owe their power to the grace of the Adeptus Terra. Some governors might feel wounded by the Inquisitor's methods, resenting a blunt reminder of the limitations of their own power. It is still a very foolish Imperial commander who presents any objection to any Inquisitor's demands. It is when the Imperial commander has something to hide that things get interesting. In such an instance, the Inquisitor is most likely testing the governor, knowing full well that he or she has something to hide, and perhaps seeking to force his or her hand. In doing so, an especially bold Inquisitor might unveil a rebellion that would otherwise have taken many solar months of investigation to bring about, the Imperial Commander revealing his or her treachery for all to see. And those were 40 facts on the planetary governor. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a viewer request. You guys have been requesting to know more about the actual um, government of Warhammer or of the Imperium. And uh, this is an excellent example of that. It is the planetary governor who rules the planet. That planetary governor can be um, a fabricator. It could be a space marine uh, chapter master, or it could just be a regular planetary governor but ultimately he decides how he wants to govern his planet. Um, even though, like you saw towards the end of the video, uh, 
even though the, the planetary governor has control over the planet, if the Inquisition ever finds out that there is something fishy going on with the planetary governor, uh, they will not hesitate to execute the planetary governor for heresy. What that means is, um, if you put yourself in the shoes of a planetary governor and then you get approached by the most uh, kind, successful, and just, I guess, the best... Uh, race out in Warhammer 40k right now, the Tau Empire, if they come up to you and they say, hey, let's trade, um, and then you guys start trading, the the Inquisition will find out and they will execute you on the spot. That's why I said a little fishy. Um, so I hope this helps you guys if you guys are building your own lore. If um, you guys have any other suggestions for topics of Warhammer 40k, please comment down below. Even if it's a suggestion that's not so much on the wiki page, um, we will try our best to find out or create our own lore like with the Chaos uh, Orcs and whatnot. Um, and again, link down in the description to the wiki page to learn more about just Warhammer 40k and the awesomeness that is the Milky Way galaxy in the 41st millennium. Uh, thanks. Thank you guys so much for um, everything, for tuning in, listening, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you tomorrow. This is Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.